Hello, it's Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a, um, a different sort of uh, Jin Hao pen review. Um, bought this pen quite a while ago, maybe about a year or more ago from eBay, from China. And it cost about a pound. And um, the main reason for this is I wanted to um, sort of experiment a little bit with different nib widths and things like that. And I wanted to do a little bit of drawing with fountain pens, things things along those sort of lines. I also wanted to try to learn how to write um, some Asian characters, Japanese characters, Chinese characters, things like that. That wasn't a success. Um, so anyway, I bought this pen specifically because it has a Fude nib. So it's a very, very bent nib, basically. Um... And when I was searching through eBay for fountain pens with Fude nibs, this was one of the very few that came up, certainly at this sort of really low price. Um, and I didn't have one of these pens in my collection. So this is a Jinhao 9009. Jinhao 9009, if you like, with a Fude nib. So it's got a steel nib, which is very, very bent. Fude just in case you don't know, um, means brush. And the idea of the Fude nib is that it provides you with the ability to write Asian characters and do fine lines through to very, very broad lines. It's not a flex nib at all. Um, it's uh, just wait for the dog to stop barking. Um, it is an interesting writing experience. I shall go through the parts of the pen to begin with, before I get on to the, uh, the actual nib. So it's an all-metal pen. For a Jin Hao, this is really, really quite a quite a slim pen. Um, this came in this rather nice red finish, which does a bit like the uh, Jin Hao 220, uh, no, Jin Hao 250 that I reviewed. Um, it's a very, very similar red finish, so there is quite a lot of depth to it. It's metallic, reflective, swirly, whatever. You'll also see it's got a uh, faux sapphire, I'm guessing, embedded into the uh, end of the clip there, which is a strange touch, but it's appreciated. Turn this light off. There we go. So, I mean, for a Jin Hao pen, this is actually a little bit of an unusual design. We've got a black plastic finial at the end, gold clip, gold, I don't know what you call it, half of the cap. So that's nicely shaped with these ridges, things like that. Um, Jin Hao engraved on the cap band and... 9009 and what I'm guessing is Jin Hao written in Chinese lettering underneath. Barrel tapers down, gold insect, uh, end finial there, pop off the cap, aluminium section, now this one doesn't have, it's, it's a matte sort of finish, this one doesn't have any of the uh, ridges that you see on the Jin Hao 250. Um, there is a small gold edge to the uh, to the barrel, so that unscrews. And this came with a cartridge converter. However, um, what I'm doing in this pen, I've bought a whole selection of different coloured Jin Hao cartridges, and so far I've only really properly tried the blue, which is a reasonably enough blue, works well enough, I'm happy with it. This is the black, this is the black cartridge, so let's just see, this is a brand new cartridge. I haven't used this pen with this cartridge at all, so you can see it's full. See how much ink there is in there. Screw that back on. So that's the pen. It's not as heavy as the 250, it's quite a it's quite a decent weight. Most of the weight is in the cap. So you take the cap off. It's a good length. You can write with it just about unposted. You can post it. It goes on quite deeply. It's not hugely secure unless you jam it on. Um, 
but I find that the cap is quite weighty. It's not back heavy, but it's it's putting a lot more pressure on here. And if you've never written with a food with a food a nib before, um, it's an experience and a half. It's tricky, and you want as much control over this as you possibly can when you're writing. So I wouldn't bother trying to post the cap because it's it's just not going to be a great writing experience. So let's have a look at what happens. I'm just going to have to try and get this pen to start writing because it's brand new cartridge and it's been a bit finicky trying to get it to write. And it's still being finicky. It doesn't normally do this. I don't have any problems with these pens normally still struggling to get this thing to write I shall have to give the cartridge a bit of a squeeze it's quite a stiff cartridge these Jinnau cartridges are also quite long um, they are sort of standard international ink cartridges but they do seem a little bit long um, in comparison to other ink cartridges that I've had. Right, slowly getting the feed saturated. Oh, this is a pain. Now this pen, because, here we go, I'm getting it to write now, just get the ink flowing. Um, this pen is, in my view, quite a good little pen. It does have a tendency to hard start, um, mainly because you've got, let's show you the, the, uh, the nib. Look at that nib. Yep. That is bent. It's not broke. Come on, focus. There we go. It's not broken. I didn't drop it. It's a bent food a nib. So when you hear about pens with bent nibs, there's bent nibs and then there's food a nibs. That angle there, that curve, enables the nib to have an awful lot of line variation. Now, I'll talk about that in a minute. Just talk about the experience of using this pen because it is quite quite different to other pens um, the nib does because there is a lot more surface area there you think about that nib slit um, it does have a tendency to hard start and run run it run out basically if not run out basically stop writing because I'll just get the thing primed again Oh, writing upside down, absolutely fine. Can't get the... Oh, it's been a real pain, this one. I think next time I uh, won't bother with the cartridge and I'll just carry on with the converter because that has always been very, very reliable. This has been very, very problematic. Right, okay. Now I'm writing with it. Let's see what this pen does. So. Jinhao 9009. Fude. Nib. Ugh, skippy. There we go. Right. So, let's do a writing sample. Now, this isn't the main thing with this food a nib. So, 
with my writing angle, it works, I can write with it. It's wet, definitely a wet writer, because, and I shall demonstrate now, the angle that you write with the nib dictates the, uh, the thickness of the line. So it's not really um, designed for everyday writing. But as you can see, you can do it. It's perfectly acceptable depending on the writing angle that you have. Now, start with the pen vertical. Fine lines. Angle it slightly. Slightly broader lines. Angle it lower, oops, lower and lower down, and you can see where the food a, i.e. brush, starts to starts to take effect. Even reverse writing works very well. So you get this extra fine. extra fine line reverse writing but it's still possible to do it this way which isn't quite as fine but you know you've got this immense amount of line variation now I'm not pushing this nib this is just the nib writing on the paper when I can make it contact trying to view this over the camera so you get huge amounts of line variation. Very, very nice. Now, um, this is what this pen is about. It's being able to provide lots of line variation for drawing. Um, I wouldn't say it's a great everyday writer. I've been using this pen at work for... for months and months and months mainly for underlining things so if i ever want to make sure that i don't miss something there we go you get a really really thick line i mean you can stick these together and you know lays down a huge amount of ink i don't have any issues with flow from this nib so i mean you can color in all sorts of things i mean you you think about how much ink you can lay down here you know, you can colour in whatever you want. You've got a box, you want to colour it in. Easy enough. Lots and lots of ink. Loads of ink going down here. And so, yeah, whatever you want. I mean, I'm no artist, but, you know, this is a fountain pen and it's giving you so much line variation. However, when you do try drawing with it, it becomes difficult because the natural angle that you would personally hold a pen is going to vary. So, you know, you might think, well, that's not right. I want to draw, I don't know, a tree. So you draw a tree and you want fine branches up here. And you suddenly start realising that you know, it's 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 not quite right. So you, you need to learn the various angles of where is going to work for you. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's not the easiest pen to write with. I mean, you, you can write. I mean, you've seen I've written the text up here. You can write with it as an everyday writer, and then you know, use it for nice bold broad underline line um, drawing with it is is it's good fun um, I mean you can get some fairly decent um, what I would call you know it, it, it's good because you can lay down so much ink I mean for sketching yeah it's great you might use an extra fine or a fine nibbed fountain pen and a broad something like that it's good fun being able to do these sort of little things so you get a lot of uh, a lot of enjoyment but it isn't it isn't a great everyday writer because you do have to be very conscious of the 
nib angle on the paper, otherwise you get thick lines, thin lines, all the rest. But it's, as you can see, perfectly acceptable. So, food a nibs, not for everybody. Um, I know some people have tried them, can't get on with them. Some people like them for drawing. Some people even do manage to learn Chinese and Japanese characters and Asian characters and write with them, but it is not something that I am very able to do. But it's good fun playing with these pens. <clears throat> One final word is, I mean, we've seen how much ink these things lay down, these food A nibs. Cartridge converter pen. It's not an eyedropper, nothing like that. This lays down a huge amount of ink. So you're going to get, if you've got a nice shading um, ink or sheening ink, this is going to lay down so much ink, you're going to get a lot of um, a lot of really nice ink colours and things like that, ink properties. But it does lay down a lot of ink. And you saw that that was a full cartridge when I started this video. And it's already taken a tiny tiny bit of ink from up here that's just from that so be aware these are thirsty nibs these really really do chew through your ink so because it's a cartridge converter I would recommend using the, um, the included converter and having a bottle of ink handy um, if you're going to use this for an extended period because you will need it or at least a very good supply of ink cartridges so hope you found this video useful of the Wingsong 9009 with a food a nib thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye